So to me, the way in which non-duality is to be lived with in order to not become cult-like is to be human on the human level. Like, so to know these differences, so what it is to be human and what it is to be a more balanced human. So you be human, you understand what the human is up to, you know, so you understand like if you're shouting at somebody with anger, like underneath that more than likely what you want is intimacy or that you're afraid. So you kind of like have this, this deep insight into being human and what it is to be human. And that ideally it's better not to shout at someone, like if you want a more peaceful life. So you kind of like become a, a more wise human, a more balanced human, a more understanding human. So, and the reason that you need to do that is because it's, it's learning about this cult-like mentality that can appear in the human and that using non-duality to make you have a better life or to feel better about yourself is not the answer. It can help the human have a better life. That the ideas can be relaxing for the human. But to me, really becoming more balanced is really getting to know the human and getting to know what it's like to be human and becoming very unjudgmental about what it is to be human. So there's that on that side. And then there's the other side where it's deeply known who you are, but you're not, that's not being used. So this deep knowing of who you are in every moment this deep connection to source and this expansiveness, like this energetic shift. So you're not limited anymore. You're this expansiveness and the character is appearing in that rather than prior. It's like the character is like center focused and so important and you don't know who you are or that you do know who you are, but it's still hidden in the background. So it's this shift round. Like, so right now who you are is everything, but that's not conceptual. That's experiential. It's like a shift in perception. And that's happening now, even if you feel limited as a person. If you really explore what you're feeling, you'll notice that there is no boundaries on anything that you feel. The hearing and the heard are one. The seeing and the seen is one. The smelling and the smelt is one. The feeling and the felt is one. The thinking and the object is one. So there is no subject object. It's it's a shift in perception. And then the human becomes more balanced, but it's not trying to be a perfect human because that will trigger um, or that will just elongate the seeking. You you like you understand the limitations of what it is to be human, like our our tendencies to to, to be cult-like about everything we do, to believe in ourselves, to, to not want to be vulnerable, to want to be all-powerful or want to be the victim or whatever it is, or to have these like ingrained responses to situations, to have annoyance, to have fear, to have jealousy, but not, not hiding that, to be real with it. And also to know that it's not necessarily yours. Like we also, there's like, you could call telepathic beings. Like as soon as you walk into a room, you're feeling other people's feelings. You're kind of having other people's thoughts. I mean, where does your thought begin and another end? And I don't just mean that like, um, like that you're picking up other people's thoughts. I mean it as in like, Everything that you think now is a result of what other people have thought. You can't think outside of this society. You can't think outside of what you've been taught. Somebody else invented the word humble. Somebody else invented the word you. And you're using all of that and then thinking. I don't know if that's making sense. But in the end, it doesn't really matter. Your freedom is what is it's what's beyond the person what is here now this is the freedom this is the freedom as soon as you start getting into the perfect human you start getting into cult fucking land Ooh, cult fucking land Ooh, she swore yes i remember somebody once sent me an email that saying the reason i sweared was because repressed sexuality 
um yeah so because it's like following this ideal like it's about power like this ideal of a perfect person the ideal of them having things that i don't have of them being better than me of them having a perfect life and so this person they believe that they are enlightened or that they are free on the human level or that they are free of all conditions and habits. And then this creates a cult-like mentality because that's impossible for that to happen. There is always going to be habits and conditionings appearing in someone. And we can't tell what's perfect or what's not, what's the right one or what's the wrong one. That's what the cult would then have to define. So it's good to feel happy. It's good to feel joy. It's good to feel peace. It's good to feel love. It's good to feel... Um, monogamy so that's what the cult has to define so then everyone has to try to be like that or the other cult might be it's good to be polyamorous it's good to lie it's good to cheat it's good to have all these negative feelings and then that becomes the cult and it's seeing the difference like human is human we have these ideas we have these behaviors they are going to improve they're going to get better you're going to have some people that are more in denial and unconscious on the human level and then you'll have more which are more evolved and can see deeper into themselves but that's just being human everyone can learn to be more evolved but having love in your heart or kindness in your heart isn't better than the other ones in terms of a light enlightenment and waking it's better for more peaceful relationships more peaceful and harmonious personality it's knowing these differences